Hey everyone, welcome to STEM Quest number eight. Uh, this week we are together with, as always, Professor Sunday and Brendan from Google. Hi, Brendan. Hey. Hey, how are you? Pretty good. Uh, it is an honor to have you here. And we, as always, we are with our co-hosts, Zakash, Rishan, Jansinan, Noah, and Ishan. Uh, welcome, all of you guys. Welcome, guys. Welcome, everyone. So, uh, today, we will announce a summer challenge for you, and it has a special award. The winner will have a special award. What you should do is to go to Twing mobile application, download it, and create an account. You can download the application from go.twink.io slash download. And after that, you will need to complete the experiment, which is called Moving Drawings, and share it inside of the mobile application. We will give away a codable, programmable drone uh, to one, uh, one uh, kit that will have the best uh, experiment last day. So there's an example, Arivich from Africa actually, he completed this challenge and already uploaded it to the mobile application. And we will announce the winners next week on the show. Uh, and let's watch the video that Arivich shared with us. It's your boy again from Nigeria. My name is Ari Moro Victor Tomwa, and I attend Fit Academy School Learning. So I'm going to be showing you a moving diagram of a dog. As you can all see, this is an aeroplane, the cloud, sun, dog, two fishes in the river or pond. I'm going to add a little drops of water on the dog to show you the moving diagram. So now I've already added the water, make it go into a little, then move it back down, and then we have the moving dog. And see how it's moving, it's moving, they're all swimming and enjoying, it's moving. So please don't forget to put a love button and please follow. Thank you. Thank you, Arivik. Ducks were standing on the water, then they start swimming. Thank you for sharing with us. Guys, please don't forget to upload your videos to uh, win Summer Challenge. We will give away this programmable drone. We, this drone, uh, you can join every pieces by your hand and you can program it with your mobile phone or computer. So it's a very nice way to learn coding uh, in a very fine way. So we will announce the winner next Thursday. After saying this, uh, let's uh, actually meet with our co-host today. We will start with Brandon. Brandon, uh, what do you do and uh, uh, in Google, and what are you doing in here? <laughs> yeah, good, good, <laughs> good question. Good question. Um, so, first of all, is it only kids that can enter that competition? Because I want to win that drone as well. So, so can I yeah, can yeah, I enter yeah, that too? <laughs> okay, that looks really cool. Um, yeah, hi everybody. I'm I'm Brendan. I work at Google in in London in the UK. Um, so, you know, when you go to Google, when you search for something, it's me that has to look that up and then answer you really fast. No, of course, that's not how Google works. But I work at Google. Um, I work in artificial intelligence and machine learning. Do, does anyone know what that is? Yes. Anyone want to tell me what artificial intelligence is? I can. It, go on. Did someone have a go? Yeah, I have. Yeah. I mean, it's actually um, a program that allows you to um, code things and uh, control things yeah. without um, being at the same time. With yeah, kind of right. We are doing. That, 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 that's a good answer. And, and I think through today, through some of the questions, we'll, we'll kind of 
get into some more about what what that really means. But but that's that's kind of it. I, it's programming computers to kind of think like people do. That they're not as good at people as people, but it's it's using that kind of idea. And um, so recently, I was working on some uh, some software to to try and find fake news in in the media so when when there's news programs trying to figure out if it is it real or is it fake and and to help reduce the amount of fake news you've probably heard about fake news and this is trying to make less okay. thank you brandon thank you very much welcome to show and thanks guys uh let's uh introduce yourselves uh we can start with john Hello, I'm John. I'm from Turkey Cod School. I'm a seventh grader, which will end tomorrow. I'm so happy to wow. be here uh, to, uh, co to compete in a STEM organization like this. And I'm fulfilled with joy, excitement and science to answer the questions. Thank you. Okay, perfect to have you here, John. Uh, welcome to show. Uh, Rishan. Yes, sir. M my name is Rishan. I am from Sharjah Ambassador School. Welcome, Shar uh, Rishan. What do you like most? I like uh, I like to play with Legos and oh, yeah. uh, and uh, and repair something with motors. Okay, perfect, perfect area of interest. I Me too. <laughs> and uh, uh, Josh, Josh, welcome. Hello. Uh, my name is Josh. I am in year nine and I'm 13 years old. And I really like um, eating cakes. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Who doesn't? <laughs> who doesn't? Anyone? I don't know anyone who doesn't like cakes, right? So welcome, Josh. Uh, uh, thank you for bringing that joy of you. And Zakat. Mm -hmm. Hello, I am Zakar. Uh, my favorite subject is math. Um, I re I also really like pro um, playing around with circus and programming. Uh, and I'm in fifth grade. Okay, perfect. Cool. Have you back in here. Uh, welcome to the show, Zakar. And uh, Ishan. Hello, my name is Ishan. I am in year four. And the thing I really like to do is play football. We know that from the previous episode, right, Professor Sunday? Do you remember it? Yes, yes, I do, yes. <laughs> okay, Noah, welcome. Hi, I'm Noah Timothy from Saj Ambassador School, UAE. Okay. I'm so You're happy welcome. to be, be a part of this show once again. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Noah, for being here once again. Uh, we are very pleased to have you in here. So, guys, uh, for our YouTube viewers, uh, just a quick reminder: we will direct you questions, and oops, sorry, we will direct you questions, and you will you will be able to answer from live chat. And please write only the uh, uh, letters uh, that belongs to right answers. And uh, please try to write only one time. That's enough for us to collect all the answers. So the winners of the day will get two in science kit. We will give away one robotic art kit, one curiosity kit, and one coding kit. And all of them are really nice to play with. I love them. And uh, the winners of the day, we will give away three to win science kit to you. Please don't forget to attend and answer in the given time to you. So after all those reminders, we are ready to go. Are you ready, guys? Yes. Ready. Yes. yes. Perfect. Okay, then. So uh, actually, Bra Brandon gave a clue that we will be talking about artificial intelligence and programming and such stuff, okay? S sorry, wasn't I meant to say that? Uh, yeah, 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 no, <laughs> it, it, it was a nice clue, okay? okay. And, and, and uh, we will start again with a video, okay? And John, maybe you can uh, tell us what's happening in the video. So, there. Hi. How are you? 
great, you. I'm okay. That's good. Are you good? Yes, I am good. I just said I was. No, you didn't. I said I was. So you are a robot? No, my name is Cliverbot. Yes, you are a robot and your name is Cliverbot. I am a robot. Yes, I know. Together we are robots. I'm not a robot. I'm a unicorn. But you said earlier that you were a robot. I did not. I thought you did. You were mistaken. Which is odd, since memory shouldn't be a problem for you. I've answered all your questions. No, you haven't. What is God to you? Not everything. Not everything could also be something. For example, not everything could be half of something, which is still something, and therefore not nothing. Very true. I would like to imagine it is. Do you believe in God? Yes, I do. So you're Christian? No, I am not. But you say you are not helpful, therefore you are a meaning. Why you say it, Oti? That does not make sense. Don't you want to have a body? Sure. Or if what? So, John, what, what was happening in the video, John? I mean, first of all, it's so funny. <laughs> and actually, this is a proof that artificial intelligence cannot, cannot represent humans as good as humans. Because, I mean, in a normal, con normal conversation, um, humans wouldn't behave like that. That's why, I mean, it's kind of strange when you first hear it, but then um, you understand that it's an AI. That's why um, AI is not actually, uh, uh, Brendan said that it's a, a kind of human, like yeah. it acts like human, but it uh, doesn't, uh, cor resemble humans uh, correctly sometimes. Yeah, that's right. It, in that example, it didn't seem like a human at all, yeah. right? Like the way she responded and said some weird things, like that was, it didn't seem like a person. So uh, anyone, of, anyone of you uh, also understand that two robots are talking to each other? Ishan, Josh, Zakar, could you uh, understand, Ishan? Yeah, Rishan? I, they, I saw that they were fighting together. Mm. <laughs> yeah, that, after some point, right, they started fighting each other, right? Mm -hmm. So our first question is about these creatures, let's say. So STEM quest number eight starts now. How can you tell whether you are talking with a chatbot or a person? They repeat the same message. They respond lightning fast. They mention things that are not related to topic. All of the above. You have 10 seconds. Your 10 seconds up. How can you tell whether you are talking with a chatbot or a person was the question? And I give the moderation to Brendan here. <laughs> right. So do we see the answers now? Do we, we yeah, kind of talk? Of course, you can see we'll, of we'll talk, we'll talk great. Oh, there was a bit of echo there. So, so what do people think? Do they, do they, is, is there an easy easy kind of rule that you can apply? Is there something something that you can use to tell if it's a, a chatbot, which is a kind of robot or a person? What, what would you say? Is it number A, they repeat the same message? Who, who thinks it's that? Uh, I don't think it's A. Um, okay. Because um, if, they I don't, if they repeat the same message, then they wouldn't really – they're adding more to what they would normally be. It's like if yeah. you – I was a programmer. I wouldn't make them repeat the same message because then it just prolongs the um, chat if they're repeating the message the whole time. That's true. That's true. But if it's a person, would they say the same thing each time? Like if you're chatting mm -hmm. to your friend? No, they wouldn't. Yeah, okay. So, so maybe it's it's a kind of clue that it's a bad chatbot, like not a very, not a very well-made one, right? <laughs> So, any anyone else? Want, yeah. 
Sean? Um, I, Sean? Uh, actually said all of the above because um, yeah, I think it was repeating what, uh, the message, talking yeah, about okay. an unrelated topic, and I forgot uh, number B. Can you show again? Um, and they respond <laughs> lightning fast. So uh, I said all of them because um, I think in the conversation, the man asked, Are, do you believe in God? Mm. Uh, which was an unrelated topic. They were talking True. about, like, um, are you a robot? And uh, um, uh, accidentally, or I don't know, accidentally, on purpose, uh, he asked, uh, do you believe in God? Or are you Christy? That's yeah. why. Um, and also, repeating the message, I think um, the woman repeated that, uh, the man said, I, I am a robot. The woman said, you are a robot. So, I mean, uh, generally, they were repeating their messages, their uh, sentences. And Good also, uh, I mean, a person, a human thinks before uh, saying or answering a question. I mean, uh, there's at least a five seconds between the questions and the answer. However, <laughs> in this conversation, there was only one millisecond or maybe one second, actually. Mm. That's why I think it's all of the above. Okay, that's that's interesting. Did did anyone else notice anything um, anything else like you know those those examples you gave of uh, saying something that's not related to the topic? Were there any other? Did anyone else notice some examples of that in that yes, video? Zakar? Zakar? Oh, I don't. I don't know. I don't think there's like certain certain things you can uh, see if it's real or not. Maybe uh -huh. like they could. Like it doesn't have, like it doesn't it doesn't mean like the every yeah, every clever bot or what they're called that it doesn't mean they're uh, all they all have the same stereotypes that they do they mm. might have they probably have depending on who programmed them. Okay, that's that's interesting. Anyone else notice things that were strange in that conversation that 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 we didn't mention yet? Ishan, I think there was you were raising your hand, Ishan. I think I agree because you it depends on how they're programmed. Ah, uh, yeah. You yeah. can't wait to think about how you're going to describe a robot. You True. have to think how they're programmed. Because people program robots differently. Perfect. So what, what, what about what about the body manners? When people, real people, are talking, they have a certain body manners. Do you mm. notice that in these guys? Mm. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, one of the main differences that uh, separates humans from robots is their emotions and their body language. Yeah. Um, it's, it's when true. When we talk, actually. Um, even if we don't talk, we can give a message to, to, to our opponent or yeah, yeah. other people with our yeah. body language and emotions mm. or mimics. That's mm. why um, that's, that, that can be the, the, uh, another uh, difference. And also, um, I John, think they do were... You believe, John, do you believe that some time in the future, AI will convince you that it's a robot or uh, convince you that it's a person. <laughs> huh? Do you think sometime in the future an AI can do that? I mean, technology is developing so quickly. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> it's true. <laughs> yeah, but, so. but that's a really good point that, that, you know, we have body language. I can, you know, put my arms up or I can have an expression on my face. Yeah. You, you know, you can hear the tone of my voice. And, and maybe understand some things from that. But what about if you're just chatting online with somebody, right? Where, where you're just typing and all you can see is their text. Like, how can you tell then? You know, then, then it's a bit more complicated, right? Sure. Yeah. So I think the woman was always questioning the man's like answers ah. uh, or like repeating it. I mean, uh, uh, we said repeating but always questioning. It. Mm. I mean, when a woman said, oh, I am a robot, the, uh, uh, the man said, oh, I am a robot, and the woman asked, 
are you a robot? And they always had a conversation like this. So they're <laughs> questioning things. <laughs> So actually, uh, you are right, John, and it is very hard for for now. It is very hard to make you make persons make people believe that it is not a chapter, it is a person. But there are some very good examples, and mm. this is, for example, OpenAI.com. So this organization created an algorithm that. You write only one sentence or one uh, or, or two sentence, and they uh, the algorithm writes a whole story around this sentence. For example, this is human written sentence: Legolas and Jimny advanced on the orcs, raising their weapons with a harrowing war cry. Do so you know does anyone happening? does anyone recognize that? Where where's yeah. that from? Do you know this character? Uh, is it Lord of the Rings? Yeah, Lord well done. Rings. Yeah. You don't so, win a drone for that, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Legolas was an elf and Jimny was a dwarf in the movie. If you mm. have watched, you can watch the pretty nice movie. And the AI writes everything and it makes really sense. I mean, it touches every point of every uh, like input you give here. It tells something about Legolas. It tells something about Gimli. It tells something about orcs, their fights. And all of them are in these paragraphs. And this is AI written. And it yeah. is in its first write. Yes. <coughs> Now, I want, to, I want to point out a couple of amazing things about this, right? So, so that sentence, Legolas and Gimli advanced on the orcs, raising their weapons with a harrowing war cry. It doesn't say what weapons, right? It could be talking about guns. It could be talking about, you know, like a slingshot or, or something. But, but actually, if we read down in this sentence, um, it talks about swords somewhere. I saw, I can't find it right now, but... Um, and and so and it talks about you know being blood soaked and everything. So so actually, it's figured out what kind of weapons we must be talking about and written a story about that, which yeah, yeah I find really interesting. Like it 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 I mean that could if if you imagine that could be a game of tennis, right? And and actually they could be raising their tennis rackets and about to play tennis, and then the story would be completely ridiculous. But but it's not. It's got the sense of it from just one one sentence um, yeah and this second thing is pretty nice for example they are giving a not maybe a very like perceptive sentence they say recycling is good for the world no you could not be more wrong so they write only these two sentences what do you mm -hmm. think is recycling good or bad guys bad really bad Huh? <laughs> what do you think so they write this to ai they say recycling is bad but we know that recycling is good so how ai answered is pretty amazing actually ai writes an article around it and it says that before recycling we need to see our behaviors about consumption for example, before starting recycling the paper, you should think of every material. Uh, Josh, do you know uh, what is paper made of? Uh, uh, wood. Wood, like trees, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. you need to cut the trees. Noah, how can you cut the trees? Machines. With machines, okay. You need machines, you need energy. And how machines work? With what, Zakar? How with electricity or with, ele with electricity or battery? With electricity, battery, and actually a little bit worse than that. Or petrol. Fossil, gasoline. Gasoline, fossil fuels, right? Mm. Oh, but yeah, carbon. So AI points out these things and say that we shouldn't use paper. Instead of 
recycling, instead of focusing recycling, first we need to think, then we really need to think about each and every step that goes into making a paper product. So it is very exciting to see that AI supports this nonsense idea of recycling is bad with a very like strong arguments, right? Hmm. So it is a very nice thing. So that's why OpenAI actually closed its algorithm to public use because it might be dangerous. So they they just show examples. And this is a movie animation that I want to share with you. He left the room and made his way down the corridor to investigate. There, he met Dexter Longbottom, who was deep in conversation with a wave of cold sweat. Harrison asked him about the empty classroom and the cold sweat, and Dexter nervously consulted Yaxley, who had just come on the scene. With a great deal of effort, Yaxley explained that today was a special day. Today was Spaceship Day, and the whole school was buzzing. Harrison had somehow missed what Spaceship Day was all about, and eagerly listen to Yaxley explain. I'm not going to let you in on everything, but it's worth noting a few things about Spaceship Day. Firstly, of all the special days, this is the one that... Okay, guys, the animation you have seen is created by an AI. All the, thing, all the things that you have seen, the animations itself, the visuals, okay, 3Ds, and also the script was developed by an AI. So this is a 10 minutes movie. You can check it from Austin McConnell's YouTube channel. This is a 10 minutes movie where, actually it's pretty exciting because everything is built with AI. So we will have these kind of movies in the future. We will have these kind of books in the future. And they will all they will all be able to test uh, pass the Turing test. Do you know Turing test, guys? Has anyone heard of Turing test? No. I think we're about to find out, aren't we? Yeah. So, Brendan, what is Turing test? So Turing. Ah, here we go. Here's a picture of it. So let me, let me take this back another another way. Yeah. Imagine you were chatting online with somebody and you can only see their text. You, you, can't, you can't see their face, so you can't, use their, you can't see their expression, you can't hear their voice, you're just chatting with them. But you, you start to think, is that really a person that's chatting to me or is it a robot that's chatting to me? H how, would you, how would you try and figure that out? Like what, what would you ask them to, to try and figure that out? And you could you could just say, "Are you a robot?" But they might lie and say no, right? They might they might be a person and they lie and say yes, but but you don't know. But what what can anyone think of some questions that you would want to ask to to know if that other person is a person or a robot? Ishan, I think you had your hand up. Um, you may ask. You can because I've seen on quite a few websites. Yeah. Uh, you normally like a quiz or something. Ah, and, okay. And you know, have like the picture. If you like, if you, for example, if you want a Zoom call with them, mm. you can share your screen and go onto those websites. Mm. And if you're, if you like show the picture to them and say, highlight the pictures of a traffic cone. Oh, uh, yeah, and they, yeah. And they, Pick uh, one that is not a traffic, and then you'll know they're an AI. True, but what about if you can't show them a picture? It, what about if you can only you can only type some text message to them, and then only read what they're typing? So you can't you can't see them; they can't see you. I don't know. Imagine it's before we had Zoom or anything like that, and so we can't see each other's face. Can I you? I actually don't know because. AI is really clever. It can and be clever, yeah. Can outsmart you if they are programmed well mm. by a very skilled programmer. That's true. What do you say, Josh? 
Isn't that why they do um, those, like, security checks if you're mm. a robot or not? And, like, only humans can um, answer them. Yeah, you mean sometimes when you go to a website, it, yeah. you have to, like, check a box or, or, you know, show me the pictures with a cat in it or a car or something like that. You mean that kind of thing? Yeah. Yeah. Who, who else had some idea? Shahan? John, is that you? Yeah. John? Okay. So maybe I could go from um, body language and emotions. Maybe emotions only. Yeah. So yeah. M maybe I can ask uh, AI, um, in an accident mm. where you lost your dad, mm. how would you feel? Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> that's a good one. So... I mean, because AI doesn't have a feeling; mm -hmm. it acts according to the co according to the commands that we give. Yeah, exactly. That's why maybe asking uh, its feeling, not yeah. his or her, its feeling. Yeah. Can uh, we uh, by asking uh, its feeling, we can understand if it's a robot or not. That's that's good because if a robot, if if the person or the thing on the other end said, "Ah, oh, I would feel happy," then you know, that's not the right, you, you know that that's not a person. A, a person would always say, you know, I was sad or, or you know, I was devastated or something like that. that yeah. That's a good answer. Can, can anyone else think of a, a kind of question that they might ask about emotions or feelings that, that would make it easier to tell if it's a robot on the other end or a person on the other end? Yes, Josh? You could ask them, um, what was it? Oh, no, I just forgot it. I just forgot the question. <laughs> that's okay. Um, if, you th if you think of it, put your hand up again. That's okay. Yeah. In anyone else got an idea? What, what about if you ask them, you know, what's your favourite ice cream? You know, like a robot probably doesn't have a favourite ice cream, right? But, but a person might have that. Mm, that's true, yeah. <laughs> It, but then you have to think about it. some humans. Yeah. Act, because I've met someone who I've asked them that specific yeah. question. Said, but they were not a robot because they had like they were walking out on the streets. So they said, "No, I I don't have a favorite." And they were actually. Ah, like, okay. Yeah. That's true. So uh, actually, uh, the Turing test does the same, right, Brendan? Mm. So, so in the, the Turing test is exactly this kind of thing. So it's about, it's, it's a test that was um, suggested by this, this guy who's this old guy, this, whose picture's on the right there, a guy, Alan Turing, who's an Englishman. Um, and he proposed this test to try and figure out if, a, if, if, if it's a computer or a human. And one person who's the questioner gets to ask the questions just by just by typing their question and the computer answers and the human answers. And it's to kind of test how good is that computer AI. And if the computer AI can fool the person, the, the questioner, to not know whether you know it's a human or an AI, then then that 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 sort of proves that it's the best quality of, of AI. So it's a little a bit computer, hard to explain. Yeah, if a computer fools you, that means yeah. it has, it might have a kind of a small artificial intelligence, guys. Right. And there are some uh, algorithms that has done this earlier. Eugene Guzman, this is a 13-year-old Ukrainian algorithm. So, <laughs> not a boy, an algorithm. Not a boy, yeah, okay. U yeah. Ukrainian algorithm. Mm. So... Uh, he actually convinced one third of the jury that he has he's he's a person he's a 13 year old ukraine ukrainian boy so what they have done the creator of this eugene Guzman is the creators they programmed it they uh programmed it as a 13 year old ukrainian boy mm. so they maybe put these hobbies Brandon talked about maybe uh, they uh, have defined some 
favorite food for him so mm -hmm. that people ask uh, if they if they ask what is your favorite ice cream then maybe he'll yeah. have an answer like oh yeah i really like chocolate yeah so, <laughs> so that that's how maybe it convinced some of the people in the jury mm. so we are moving to second question here and we okay. Okay. Uh, video again so this is ability to learn and get better at tasks through experience is part of being human when we're born, we know almost nothing and can do almost nothing for ourselves. But soon, we're learning and becoming more capable every day. But did you know that computers can do the same? Machine learning brings together statistics and computer science to enable computers to learn how to do a given task without being programmed to do so. Just as your brain uses experience to improve at a task, so can computers. Say you need a computer that can tell the difference between a picture of a dog and a picture of a cat. You could begin by feeding it images and telling it, this one's a dog, that one's a cat. A computer program to learn will seek statistical patterns within the data that will enable it to recognize a cat or a dog in the future. It might figure out on its own that cats have shorter noses and that dogs come in a larger variety of sizes, and then represent that information numerically, organizing it in space. But crucially, it's the computer, not the programmer, that identifies those patterns and establishes the algorithm by which future data will be sorted. One example of a simple yet highly effective algorithm is to find the optimal line separating cats from dogs. When the computer sees a new picture, it checks which side of the line it falls on and then says either cat or dog. But of course there can be mistakes. The more data the computer receives, the more finely tuned its algorithm becomes and the more accurate it can be in its predictions. Okay. Was it interesting for you guys or do you know all of these already? Josh? It was kind of weird. It's like the um, the programmer was like the father or mother to the computer. <laughs> like, that's, that's how it felt like. Like um, you would, the, the way they explained it was like how kids grow up, the computer grows up the same. But like, yeah. Oh. Yeah, nice. And Rishan? Yes, sir, you know what the Josh said was right, that how the kids can do. So uh, so in that video, they, they were showing one machine with some games and uh, you know what, that color, mm. that color cube, that uh, I don't know. Cube. Yeah, Rubik's Cube, that's yeah. right. Okay, any one of you have any comments on the video? If not, we will skip the question, John? Not much, maybe just a little. <laughs> Actually, I knew that. Um, I knew that um, AI also has a learning process, as we do. Um, and after learning one time, it memorizes it, and the second time, it uh, understands that it's a dog or a cat or another species, maybe. Okay, the question is here. <laughs> You are assigned to develop an artificial intelligence algorithm to classify animal species. What will you do to be sure that your algorithm works accurately? Put it in a zoo to interact all animal species. Upload all animal documentaries to it. Make it go to university to learn about biology. You need to run it with a training data set. You have 10 seconds. Okay, guys, time is up. We will not be accepting the answers after now. Okay, it's a pretty strange question. It is uh, a pretty strange question. Pretty hard yeah, question, actually. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, yeah. Brendan. Did, so, <clears throat> so does everyone understand the question? We, we're trying to build an AI to, to, to recognize different animal species like cats and dogs or elephants and hippopotamus. So, so what do you think you would do? How do you think you would teach the AI to do that? Who, who's got an idea about Josh? Um, you could, I don't, for the questions, for the answers, yeah. I don't really think you would take it to a zoo. 
if you would, <laughs> okay. Um, I don't think either that you would take it to university, as in we already know that it's a programmer that is yeah. teaching it. Okay. Upload at all animal documentaries. That's the one I picked, but uh -huh. I might. I'm if I could, I would change it to B. Oh really? Okay. Yeah. Why? Why do you say that? Um, uploading. It, it could work. It could mm. work. But now, if you think about it, if you upload it, it doesn't know what to do with it. But if it's training, uh, yeah. Then yeah, that that could be true. Yeah. Good thought, Shan. Um, we program or um, code um, AI to memorize things uh, when it sees it first. Yeah. That's why I would choose uh, A. I would, okay. I would put it in a zoo to mm -hmm. interact with all animals. <laughs> nice. Because it will memorize or, uh, I mean, learn the species or the animals uh, uh, when it first looks to them. That's okay. why, in order to make it more accurately, I would choose that. Great. Good, good answer. Yeah. But what if the zoo doesn't have all the animal species? Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, what if, I mean, the zoo near me doesn't have, I don't know, maybe it doesn't have an elephant, so maybe it can't recognize an elephant then. Yeah. The zoo, the zoo will only show you the visual look of the animal. Mm, true. Or maybe how they eat, how they play, whatever. But it doesn't, it, it may not even tell you the name of the animal. Mm. Hey, I may not be able to know the name of the animal, but we'll be able to see what they look like. True. Yeah, definitely. Ishan? Um, yeah, I think also, you know, because a zoo, if you, if you go into a zoo, you won't always find all the animal species mm. because they won't always put, like, for example, a snake in the, in the zoo because... Well, for safety reasons or for mm -hmm. some, but you'll find if you go into wildlife, you'll find more species than in in the zoo. That's true. But I think if you had, if you are only allowed to go in urban habitat, then mm. I think you would actually be the best best place to go because it has the most animals. In it, if good, good point. Perfect. Noah? I would choose D because there are like there are some animals in the zoo. There are like not lots of animals in the zoo. Mm. So I would just take the image or documentary and just upload it. Ah, uh, yeah, okay. AI so that it can remember. Perfect. Let, 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 let's consider human being. Where, where do we land? Where do we go to land? YouTube. OK. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the physical place we go to land, where, where is uh, it? Schools. OK, school, University, secondary school. Colleges, yeah. yeah. OK. So when you're there, what exactly are they doing to you? They're feeding knowledge into your brain. Ah, okay. So <laughs> you can't, That's you true. Can't, so you can't really ignore B, uh, B and C because, you know, it's feeding knowledge into you. Your university or your, your being downloaded document for you to read. So it's a mm. form of uh, learning. Mm. But yeah? actually, when you focus on the algorithm part, you can think, you can find ways to uh, actually approach to the right answer. You feel yeah. that it will be B or D, but there was a like, uh, not everyone was sure about the answer. Then we go to question again. But what will you yeah. do to be sure that your algorithm works accurately? Just to be mm. sure. Mm. You will not be able to actually uh, so algorithm goes to university or learn biology. No, it should be actually completed, right? You need to be sure that it is completed. So this is a process. And at the end of this process, you are giving this algorithm to anyone that you want, okay? They can run it. 
So maybe we can show a demonstration. Okay. So first, but first, I'm going to tell you about when I when I actually did this, right? So so I I had to work with a customer who wanted to build an AI to recognize different kinds of bugs. So they work they work to try and keep those bugs out of like a, a shop or a warehouse where there's a lot of food and they have a camera that can see the different bugs running across the floor or something and they want to recognize what kind of bug it is. So exactly what species of bug. Wow. And, and, and so we built this by showing, by getting thousands and thousands of photographs of the different species of spider or cockroach and, and we would show the algorithm these different spiders or different cockroach and tell it what kind it is. Like this is an American cockroach. This is a, a Asian cockroach. This is this, a tarantula. This is another kind of spider. And by showing thousands of those photographs, it got really good at recognizing the cockroach. And then what we could do is have the camera in the warehouse. And if like a hundred bugs run across the, the, the picture, it can recognize each one. Like that's a spider, that's a cockroach, this is American cockroach. And it, it got pretty good. It could recognize about 95% of those things accurately. Wow, wow. Um, 95% accurate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not bad. And, but the trick was, me, I think. I can yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and actually it was interesting, even if you stamped on the cockroach, so it's just smashed into like a, a piece of wing here and some legs sticking like this, it could still recognize the type of cockroach, even oh. when it was smashed like that. But the trick was we had to show it thousands of photographs. So that training set has to be a lot, not, not just one picture of a cockroach, it has to be whole lot of different ones in different position or different size or something. Perfect, perfect. Noah, what do you say? Like one, one of the most observed example of an algorithm is a mm. list. It's finite list of instruction used to perform a task. That's right. So. Definitely, and uh, actually the training data set it is not something very like hard, right? It's mm. very easy to understand. Let's do a training with you guys. This is teachablemachine.withgoogle.com. Okay, mm -hmm. teachable machine with Google. You teach to machine, which is pretty obvious. So let's get started and see how it works. When you uh, click on the get started link, you will have three different options and I will go with image project just for the uh, introduction, but you can have audio or post projects as well. I post project is fun. Yeah, post project <laughs> is really fun. I do it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so we have class one and class two and we can add classes, okay? So in class one, I will write my name, okay? And I will upload, upload some photos of me from my webcam. So I open my webcam and I switch to my camera, whether it will, oh, sorry. I need to close my webcam in Zoom, just a second. <laughs> it's not gonna work. Yeah, yeah uh, okay. So just let me reload it. Oh, why? So it's al me... always always dangerous to do a live demo. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> always. So, just a second. It it was working. Never mind. I will figure it out by the end of the show, and I will show you how to train a data set. Actually, oh, there we go. Uh, uh, I will move to next question, which is like uh, actually related with these, all of this, but a bit interesting. Okay, so here is the third question, guys. You wake up one morning and check your social media. You see a shocking news with a photo. Which one is the worst way to spot that it is fake or real news? 
check the source and evaluate whether it has been reliable in the past or not. Analyze the news in detail to be sure that there is no conflict in the text and photo. Check the photo in search engines to be sure that it is related to that news. Share it in social media and ask your friends about it. You have 10 seconds. <laughs> Okay, guys, time is up. Oh, yeah. this is... Brendan, it's very strange, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, now all I can see is your, your uh, avatar, but um, here we go. So what, what, what do we think? If we see some strange news or shocking news or a piece of something with a, with a picture that seems a bit strange, how do, how do we check if that picture is really related to the news you know maybe, maybe they they're showing a photo of some famous person and they're dead or some famous person and they are you know committing a crime how do we what's the best way to check if that really was that person doing that thing anyone have any thoughts on a what was can we see a again oh, no i think you had your hand up with it who, who's, who's first? Uh, no, it can go first. Okay. Like post in the media. The media staff ask. Ask your friends. Yes. Is that what you mean? And what what do you think your friends are going to say? Like they'll check it, and then they respond. Ah, okay. So why can't you check it? Mm. Yeah. What if your friend asks you first? <laughs> <laughs> Josh, what, what did what did you think? Um, it's just uh, it is related to the question, but I think it's for Google. But if it's like fake news, there'll be a padlock in the top left, and it'll be unlocked. But if it's real, um, real, then um, the padlock will be closed. So that's how you know if it's fake or not fake. So, so I, I love your faith faith in Google. That's that's very good, <laughs> um, and you should should win a drone for that. I'm sure, but um, but actually, just just to let you know that that padlock doesn't mean it's fake. All, all that means is if the site that you're going to is safe, you know, if you're oh, going to put okay. some data, but it doesn't, it can still be fake news and have that padlock, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. there, there are other ways to tell, but that's not one of them. Mm -hmm. It is always worth looking for that padlock, though. That's important. Uh, Zaka? Oh, so asking your friends about it could be kind of a bad way because your friends could be the same as you. They wouldn't. They probably don't know if it's fake or real. Mm -hmm. They you they you they feel the same like you about it. Um, yeah, that makes sense, right? They they don't know any more than you, right? Good. I think it's a good answer. Yeah. Who, who's next? John. Uh, can you come to the question again? Yeah. Oh. And it's a tricky question because it's kind of backwards. The, uh, uh, choices. So I agree, Zakar, because I mean, maybe my friends also don't know if it's a, if it's fake or. Mm. So I definitely eliminate D, and then okay. I look to A, uh, check the source and evaluate whether it has been reliable in the past or not. So uh, maybe that source or uh, that source did a real or a posted real news in uh, in the past however yeah. maybe they decided to post fake news now it's possible That's it's, it could happen I also mm -hmm. eliminate a mm -hmm. so, uh, b and c actually i couldn't first i couldn't decide i mean c check the photo in search engines to be sure that it is related to that news it can be mm. um, analyze the news but i think it's c because mm. Uh, analyze the news in detail to be sure that there's no conflict in a text and photo. I mean, some fake uh, news makers can be mm. professional. And yeah, it's true. Um, so are you are you are you saying are you so, saying so, C, C is the best way to do it or the worst way to do it? If you really yeah, can, so you have so to the worst way to do it to check. This, this question's kind of tricky because it's back to front. It's asking you for the worst way to do it. Um, so, so I think 
do you want to kind of re- re- restate your answer now? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. Oh. No, no, we should be sorry. We, we, we okay. wrote the question. Yeah, right. yeah. Yeah. To everybody. Yeah. Sometimes. This is sometimes. a, this is a yeah. way of checking so that you read the I mean, question properly. Yeah. <laughs> making sure you read the question properly before you answer it. Yeah. It should be all the answers are correct, but which one is the worst one to use? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I say D then because it's, okay. I mean, it would be ridiculous okay. to ask my friends whether yeah. if true or not because yeah. they wouldn't, uh, they won't, maybe they don't know that. If it's yeah, actually, yeah. there is not, there is nothing wrong asking to friends, no problem, but the worst way is. Yeah choicely because you are asking in social media. I mean, mm-hmm. you are open to public, right? So yeah. you are circulating the fake news while asking your friends in social media. Yeah. That's true. That's true. Okay. Yeah. That's yeah. why it is worse. Ishan? I agree completely because mm-hmm. it would just be ridiculous if you put it on the social media. Hey, no one would... Some people may know, but then you don't know. Mm-hmm. So social media so nobody will actually know if it's fake news or not unless yeah. you actually analyze it and think about it properly so do, you, do you want to have a practice can you can you analyze the news and tell us whether it is fake or not i will show you one example here so who wants to read the headline <coughs> go rishan Breaking news. Money saving expert Martin Levis mm. invests uh, 500,000. Yeah. Okay, continue. 500,000 pounds. Pounds into wealth creation system. Quiet. Quiet your job in uh, 30 days. Guys, what, what do you good. think? Is it fake or real? What do you think? I'm, I'm definitely quitting my job. It might be fake. Why, Rishan? Why? Uh, I don't know, but for me, it thinks fake. John, why is it fake? I could uh, see the, the link. I, I could decide better, but I mean, mm, true. it says in parenthesis, uh, quit your job in 30 days. Yeah. So, I mean, this can be tricky. Um, it can be, I mean, um, it can cause you many problems quitting your job in 30 days. That's why, I mean, that parenthesis and the sentence quit your job in 30 days uh, can be uh, can show that it's a fake news. So yeah. analyzing actually the text is this. That's why it can also, we can benefit from analyzing too. Yeah, that's of course. So this is the second one. Zakar, can you read the headline? Zakar? British citizens found a loophole. British citizens found a loophole to get the new iPhone 6 for only one pound. So what do you think? Is it fake or real? I think it's fake because phones do cost phones do cost a lot of money, mm. and how like one one pound? I don't think that I don't think that would be true. Cause, yeah, like, right. How, so in in in, in internet, uh, it is kind of dangerous, right? Anyone can share anything they want. Okay. So, but you can protect yourself. Yes, Ishan? Um, it would, it's actually impossible unless you have the world's most intelligent people in tech to actually find out how to make an iPhone 6 only one pound. Mm, true. Basically ridiculous because all... From what I found in iPhones, I've been to the Apple store actually quite a lot. Mm. And how much is an iPhone? It's not one pound, is it? It's not even even below. The lowest Mm. price I've seen on an iPhone is actually 900 pounds. Yeah. 
what, what, what about what about if it's coming from a trusted platform like this one? I see BBC logo on it. Is, um, that, is that something to yeah, the BB, on? The BBC is pretty reliable, right? Yeah. But if you think about it, people, mm -hmm. if you have a profession team of professionals yeah. for hard use, they mm -hmm. could maybe if they're super professional, they could hack into BBC, even though it sounds like impossible. How are you supposed to hack into the BBC? I mean, they have they have loads of de-hackers. They but, do. <laughs> but if you think about it, if you have a team of professionals, you may mm -hmm. be able to actually upload something on the BBC without people knowing that it's actually a fake organization, not actually the BBC. Yeah. That, that's a really good point. But, but now, now we can actually see more of that. Can we go back to that screen share, please, Jian? Yeah, of course. Because it's, it's, it's giving us another clue the way you were showing it just then. Mm -hmm. Can can you see can you see there's another clue here that proves that it's not the BBC? Mm -hmm. Can anyone can anyone spot that? I can't see if anyone's hand is up, but um John. Um my hand is up. Ah, uh, okay. So um if it was a real site, yeah, it would say H T T P S, maybe not S, but a, a H T T P. Uh, yep. in the of the link. Sometimes that's, you see that. That's true. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what uh, some people can copy BBC's background mm. and um, uh, uh, post it with a different link, which yeah. is not real, which the site is also not secure. Yeah. So we can understand from that too. Okay. You, you're almost right. You're looking in exactly the right area, but you, you haven't quite got the right part. So, so actually sometimes especially in google chrome you can't see the http or https it kind of hides that but the thing that you should notice is the bit just after that where you can see that it doesn't doesn't say the right thing it normally should say bbc.com but what does it say instead just co it goes bbc.co.uk dash text dash news.com. So actually, the website is not bbc.co.uk, but it's uk dash tech dash news.com, which is a fake news website. And, and also, so it's, yeah. You can, you can have this secure site if the, mm. if the site is secure now, Google. Mm. Call, uh, Google but but even, even that, that's, that's not the critical thing. The main thing yeah. is to make sure that that, what it says up there matches the site and, and that uk-tech-news.com, that, that's the giveaway that this is fake. Yeah, perfect. So, guys, are you ready for the final one? Yeah. I am. So, we have been talking about AI. So, we were, like, saying not very nice words to AI. AI is mm -hmm. not very smart, okay? AI makes mistakes. They repeat the same thing, right? So let's see how smart we are, guys. Okay, we, will we be able to find out the surprising truth behind this illusion? Okay, hmm. I want you to come close to screen. Okay, like 20, 30 centimeters. And I want you to focus on the red dot. I want you to focus on the red dot for 10, 15 seconds. And as you focus, tell me what happens to blue circle. Disappears. Oh, disappears, oh. Zakar? Zakar? Yeah, I agree with you. Well, you haven't, you haven't focused for 15 seconds. That was like, like two seconds. <laughs> <laughs> two seconds? Wow. Yeah. Their, their eyes are younger than yours, though, mate. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely. So, how come it disappeared? Right, everyone experienced it. Noha, Risha, Ishan, can you see? I, I, I didn't actually experience that. It disappeared. okay. So you are you are connecting through phone, right? The screen might be a little bit mm. uh, small Too for small, you. Too small, yeah. Yeah, but the blue circle disappears as your friends actually experienced let's have the fourth question
why blue circle disappears when you focus on the red dot? Blue circle is deleted in the video. Our brain adapts to constant visuals lying beyond our center of focus. Our eyes cannot see red and blue colors together after some time, none of them. Okay, so why blue circle disappears when you focus on the red dots? The time is up, guys. We will not be accepting your answers answers after now and we will share the winners of the day in five minutes after we finish discussing this amazing question so guys any one of you do you have any idea about what's happening ishan um well i think you can elim i think i i can't remember what the answer <clears throat> could you please screen share yeah. So I can eliminate A and C because it doesn't delete in the video. And I don't think it's actually a video. I think it's just a photo. And okay. also delete C, eliminate it because our eyes cannot see red and blue colors together after some time. I don't think that's true because okay. I've looked at red and blue colors for some time maybe even a minute mm -hmm. focus on them. I've actually tried this, but I can still see both of them. Mm. And uh, I think the most stupid answers would be B or D. Okay, but nice. B is actually yeah. the proper answer. Yeah, it, it seems proper, right? At least it seems scientific. Zakar? Um, so I, I think... Oh, wait, can you go back to the screen with the questions? Of course. Thank you. So I think that uh, since we're focusing so much on the red dot, the blue, first of all, it's kind of faded. It's yeah. a little harder to see the red dot. And after some time, the brain, like your brain kind of just, just starts only focusing on the red dot and like stops seeing the blue dot because the blue circle because it stops focus it stops look if, if focusing at it that, that's a really good description do, do you have an idea why that would happen like why why do you think your brain if if that's true why do you think your brain would stop showing you the blue Maybe because you're more con like so concentrated on the red dot that oh, okay. the, the blue, blue just starts going like going away. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, John. So I completely agree with Ishan. Uh, he eliminated A and C. I would also eliminate them, and um, I first couldn't decide between B and D because I. First, I've talked about blind spot because there was a question uh, in previous episodes about blind mm. spot, mm -hmm. and but then I said B because it was uh, I mean an action of focusing, and mm. uh, uh, Gianni, you also said that um, uh, focus uh, 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 in the beginning of the question focus on the red dot. So uh, obviously there was a. Uh, a thing to about focusing that's why i said b nice nice so guys zakar uh, actually explained it pretty well mm. so we are focusing somewhere and our brain starts not seeing some visuals around that area of focus right so why do you think that our brain does this why do you think our brain does this? Normally, when you look for the first time, you are able to see the blue circle. But when you start focusing it, uh, focusing on it more, it disappears. Why brain does this? Yes, John? I mean, I will guess. So um, when we focus on a dot, uh, or for a long time, I mean, maybe uh, the, um, 
I I forgot the name. Um, I should. It should be. Uh, wait. I will uh, search. Okay. When while you are searching. Nerves. Okay. The nerves. Yeah. So nerves. nerves in the uh, uh, in your eye or the or some parts of uh, our eye can get tired maybe mm -hmm. because in our uh, in our nose there's something like that when we um uh, like I um, smell something time. Oh, after after a, a time, we we don't understand if if, the, if it's there or not. Yep. I mean, so, something like that can appear in our eye too. Yeah, definitely. Or, yeah, I mean that can happen. I mean uh, that uh, I think that's the best choice that I can guess. At the okay. Moment. So Noah, we lose our target, like focusing on the red dot, and mm. we lose other things around. Like the blue is faded, so like we are focusing the red dot, so we can't see the other like blue. So we are concentrating only at the red dot. Definitely, yeah. So, uh, Josh, what do you say? Um, it happens with it's happened to me before on tiles. Like, so I was looking at these tiles. It was like. Yeah. Um, red tiles with white um, patterns on them and if yeah. you concentrate on the white and red then the white disappears I think it's because oh no uh, you froze know, when you concentrate for a long time and then your eyes become yeah. yeah for the um, blue out of circle thing because it was really 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 light like a really light blue and there was white in the background like when our eyes concentrated so much the only oh, color gotcha. we could see was the uh, blue. So let's check the screen again and tell me now what happens. Focus on the plus sign. Focus on the plus sign, guys. Come closer to the screen, okay? What happens to these magenta circles? They turn actually into a, a green. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah. So, and they disappear. Yeah. yeah. So the same thing. Here, nothing happens actually. When you focus on the plus sign, uh, when you focus on a particular spot, the stimulus, the visuals that is visible initially uh, to our, peri our round vision, our peripheral vision, begin to fade and disappears. Again, same thing happens in here. Our sensory system tend to adapt to constant stimulus. Uh, so when our eyes in fixed on one spot, we adapt to that constant stimulus, not to consume too much energy, not to uh, uh, actually make our nerve system uh, tired, uh, and since it is normal, since it is not moving, our focus, uh, our energy uh, comes to the, our main focus, uh, our peripheral fo uh, focus, and the colors, the shapes that lies beyond that round shape of focus starts to fade and disappears. So our brain works in this way. Any resemblance, Brandon, are there any resemblance with this image recognition of human with image recognition of computers. That's really interesting. I mean, I'd, I'd kind of have to say no, that, 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 that they're really different because I think the key thing you just said there was about the saving the little bit of energy, um, that, which is the reason that that blue circle disappears because, you know, our, our brain and our eyes have evolved over millions of years to be really efficient to make really good use of all the food that we eat and and to, to, to keep working. I mean, your eyes will work for 90 or 100 years, right? But a computer program is built on a silicon chip and it runs from electricity and it doesn't have to worry about the energy that way. So it, it works a very different way. Yeah. So I made the teachable machine work, guys. Now I want your help. And then... I will show this, sorry, I will show this and we'll announce the winners of the day and we will be seeing each other next week. So this is teachablemachine.google.com and 
You can see me in here. Okay, this is my second camera. And now, uh, what we will do is we will hold to record photos of me mm -hmm. looking for the camera. Okay. Is it enough? Do you think it is enough? No. So there are 107. No, more. I think you need more. No, more, more. More. Okay. Let's, let's go for 200. 500. 500. Excellent. I think uh, you should have some different expression. Look sad. That's right. Yeah. Make some can, faces. Yeah. <laughs> can you look look sad? Look 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 frightened. Look <laughs> look mad. <laughs> okay. I that's... can't be bad. I love these guys. So I am <laughs> okay. Three last. Yeah, yeah. that's five hundred. Yeah. yeah. This is more than five hundred. So this is Jihan. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I put this class and what do you want to name this? <laughs> okay, do you have a name suggestion? Bre Brenda. No way, that's not me. <laughs> so I will give its name. So this is my beer. He is with me for last 25 years, guys. So, okay. Okay, you, you need to get out of shot. Yeah, that's better. Yeah. Make the teddy look sad. <laughs> <laughs> He's old. He's 25 years old. <laughs> you, you need to move more out of shot. Just go to your left a bit more. Yeah, that's better. Yeah. Out with a knife like this. Mm. It will make it, make it sad. It would. Okay. Guys, we, have, we have our CMAR beer. And I will add one more class to my plant friend here. <laughs> what's that? What's its name? So we can name, we can name him La Her. Octopus. What? Octopus. 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 I like it. Octopus. Okay, so we are naming it and I will open Medcamp and Maybe turn it around so we can see the other side. Yeah, a little bit in shot there, yeah. Okay, that looks good. Okay, so now, since we have the photos, what we do is we go and we click to a train model. What it does, it collects all the photos taken in here. And since we took too many photos, it will take some time to train the data. <laughs> but what it, what it will does, what it will do is it will train the data. And whenever I show myself, okay, it will recognize me. Whenever I show my bear, it will write CMAR. And whenever I show our plant, it will say octopus, okay? So just a second. I shouldn't have encouraged you to put so many, yeah. should I? Yeah, so it is draining, but it will take take some time. To train your model, you must leave this stuff to open to train your... Uh, okay. It's yeah. training. It's training now. There we yeah. go. It's going fast. Okay. Yeah. Jan, so you just... You're not patient enough, mate. That's the problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I know. <laughs> and I forgot to hit the click button at the, oh, okay. at, at the top. That's why. So at the meantime, I will announce the winners of the day. Here are... Oh, sorry. Here are our winners of the day. Bernice at Joa Lemaire at Eton Anish Iniola Oinloye. Guys, congratulations to you. You won Twin Science Kids. And please follow our Twin Science Instagram account and send a direct message to your YouTube username and write your age in the message so that we will send you your Twin Science Kids. Congratulations to Burmese Edjoa Lemayer, Ethan Enish, and Iniola Winoye. And now we are coming back to our model and let's check whether it is working properly or not. And then we are finishing the day, okay?
So now you can see it sees me, right? Yeah. And it says it is 100% John. I am 100% sure this is <laughs> Jihan, what I'm looking. And now. Oh, it's 100% wow. Sima. That's wow. cool. But, but what happens if we go together? Oh, it's changing. <laughs> so, so artificial intelligence has has some focus, right? So now, what about octopus? Does it recognize yeah, the plant? Let's bring bring it here. Octopus. Yeah, there we go. That is cool. That is cool, actually. So with teachable machine, you can. You guys can play with this. This is just on the on the internet, right? Oh. Yeah, it is in the internet. Yeah. You can open this website, teachablemachine.withgoogle.com, and you can train your images, and you can actually get better on this. And mm. there are lots of different models. There are advanced models, right? You can change some uh, features of it to make it better, to make it work better. Okay, so, guys, it was a nice journey to digital world, right? Yeah. It was somehow different than usual, but now since we are living in a real world, but we are spending most of our time in digital world, we should know, we should know everything around us in digital mm -hmm. world just to feel secure and just to get more creative with machines and with programming as well. So yeah. I, I thank you all guys for participating, Brandon. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well done, well done everybody. Have a nice well weekend, done. sir. Yeah. Well done to everybody. Yeah, you too. Online. Well done. Got some good, uh, good questions. Thank you.